Hello, Tracy from Salem, here with just an update on this project I've been working on uh, while waiting for the next block in the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery to come out, the April block, or the April prompts, I should say. Um, and so I've been working on this piece, which I've shown a few times, um, and the title is, is um, either Rivers and Tides or or dark moon over rivers and tides, or new moon, I, something, maybe, maybe moon will be in the title, not sure. Definitely rivers and tides. It could be dark moon over rivers and tides. Um, because yesterday I added this moon. So I had been thinking about adding, so I usually, uh, or not usually, but frequently will add moons to my pieces. I got this beautiful, um, curtain, this beautiful sheer curtain at the thrift store uh, near where I live, the thrift store that supports our local homeless shelter. And it's a great place to go and get materials at, you know, super low cost. And I found this fabulous um, curtain. And so I have added many of these to other pieces. And this is what I was thinking. Um, I was really struggling with it because on this corner, uh, is this, was this lovely, I mean, this is the back side of it, but this lovely, delicate applique flower um, was right, is right up here. And this is, this piece, this background piece is from my grandmother. And so I felt, I felt like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't cover that up. It's so lovely and delicate and it's part of the original piece. And shouldn't it be kind of a thing that comes together in the whole piece? But Quite clearly, that, that flower motif really doesn't fit the feel of the rest of the piece. So finally, my mom <laughs> relieved me of the guilt and, and just said, it's fine. You know, just, you know, you're not, you're not cutting it out, right? You're just covering it. So it's still there, but um, it's fine to cover it and just stop feeling guilty about it. So then I felt free. So originally, it was going to be one of my white moons, white full moon. Um, and that just felt, it just felt so, and I usually put sort of rings around it, so white, it was going to be white rings, and that just felt so uh, jarring in the, in the rest of the piece, um, as you can see. Uh, so then I was like, all right, well, let me try, uh, maybe, maybe I should try a different color. <laughs> Go crazy, Blanchard, just try something different. So um, first I cut out this harem cloth moon and that really looks like the sun, not the moon, right? <laughs> so then I had this piece that I had pulled when I first started doing the project. Um, this beautiful piece, which I got from Artistic Artifacts. I think that's where I got it. And um, had it has been sitting around with all the threads that I pulled and everything that I pulled because I had originally been thinking about working it in um, and it just never really seemed to work in properly and um, so then I was like well let me just cut a moon out of that and see how it looks and now that I have added a lot more uh, bullion stitches here in this very dark um, thread uh, I think I showed this before. This was actually something I had gotten for um, for knitting back when I was able to knit and made a beautiful cowl out of it and have all this left over still. So I used this to put bullion stitches here over this couched cord, cording, whatever this is. Um, so I put all those bullion stitches in. And now that kind of gives sort of a nice, deep, deeper blues anchor to the base of the piece. Um, and I had put in this one, which I think are Palestrina knots, down here at the bottom. So I've got a couple of dark anchors. And so then suddenly this moon worked for me, at least. I, I totally get that it might not work for other people and they might be like, what did you just do? Uh, but that's okay, right? That's part of watching YouTube is watching people do things that inspire you and then do things where you're like, what the hell did you do? It's just do to that piece. <laughs> that's terrible. 
We all yell at the YouTubes, right? Anyway, I really like that. And then I feel like it kind of brings the these colors across the piece. Um, so, so yeah, so I added that and then um, I mentioned that I had signed up for Sue Spargo uh, retreat at Madeline Island this summer. And after I signed up, I discovered that it was actually an advanced class and you're supposed to know all the stitches in this book. Oops, but I don't care because I am going away on a vacation that is creative. That's what I'm doing. You know, this during the pandemic, obviously most of us haven't traveled anywhere. Um, and the few, you know, the few pieces of travel I've done have been to see family because it's been so long since we've seen them, which has just been, you know, life-saving, life-saving and, and heart-opening to be able to finally see family. Um, and <laughs> I'm going away on a vacation of my own. That is a creative retreat so excited so i'm getting this book and i'm starting through it and um and practicing the stitches so that's where that palestrina knot stitch came from and then this uh is the coral stitch which i've seen many times and wanted to do many times um and finally um learned how to do it from the book uh so i did that around the moon and then I wrapped the, those coral stitches in this infinitesimally thin, can I get it on the camera, uh, silver, silver thread. I didn't want a lot of sparkle and, you know, metallic, but it just gives a little hint. I think if, you, if I move it a little, you can see it, right? Just a tiny little shimmer. And now I'm doing a um, split stitch. I like to put rings around my moon, so I'm doing a split stitch that is in the same um, same thing that came from this pack, uh, but just a lighter color. So this is merino and nylon. Um, <clears throat> I'm really having a lot of fun using other things besides thread in this piece. Um, so as I've said before, this is a, um, a sari silk that's wrapped into a cord. Um, and I presume this is probably the same. And uh, I've got, and this, ooh, this. Mm. I put these French knots on yesterday. Let me get these in the, in the camera. So these are French knots. They are made with this gorgeous ribbon, which is from Steph Francis. Uh, it comes in a, it comes in a twisted pack with um, just grabbing them real quick with all of these. Let's see. No, that's not right. These are a different one. So all of these together came wrapped together. Different, this is like, I don't even know what this is, like a velveteen, I don't know. Here's the ribbon, here's some sparkly. Uh, and they come, let's see, wrapped like this. I got this yellow one as well. Um, isn't that great? So these, yeah, these are Steph Francis Texture Selection. Found out about these up from Ariana Zersher, where I'm finding about, out about so many, many great things. So I put these in since my last video. I put the moon in, and then I came back with this um, alpaca that my mom gave me for knitting, um, this lace weight, and put in all of these oyster stitches. I had a couple here, and then I had been putting in um, seed stitches with just whisper thin thread, and I really didn't like the look of it. I just really couldn't stand it. So I took it all out, and I just love these oyster stitches. I love this, this wool 
uh, guy, it's so happy making. And so I just put in a bunch more of those. And then here's another thing I learned from Ariane Zerscher is this mulberry bark. Let's zoom in on this baby. Um, and so it comes in these huge pieces. Here, I'll zoom out for a second again. It comes in these huge pieces, um, as you can see. And it's, I think I talked about it in the last video, so I'm not gonna go on about it. Um, but I just cut out a piece and put it in here. And then um, applicate it down. And, you know, am I, was I going to like cut out these stitches or tack them down so that they've had, these threads were remaining? I decided to do that. Over here, there were a couple which I just snipped out so that I had this nice big hole. Um, and I'm probably gonna go in with something, with some kind of thread. Um, so it feels like there's a couple, it feels like I'm very close to done, but it feels like there's a few places where something needs to be happening. Um, so right here, I, this is something, I, I don't wanna just leave this completely raw, um, but I'm not sure if I want to. So I've felt in, in a couple places where there's the raw edge, I have felt it in and that's really enjoyable, but I don't know if I wanna keep, I don't think I wanna do any more felting. So right here, this raw edge and this raw edge, I think something need to happen there. I think probably I might need a couple more yellow lines and, and this something needs to happen with this um, cheesecloth. I need to figure out how I want that exactly to lay and then am I going to put in any stitches that are visible or am I gonna do it in visible stitching? Um, I think maybe one, the, I have one line here I think maybe I need one or two more lines down there of some kind of stitch that's subtle, but that creates something happening down there. <coughs> Pardon me. And then I need to figure out what I'm doing with the edges because I want, I want the scallops to um, show. Uh, so I've gotta do some ironing for one thing, maybe even some starching because these guys keep folding in on themselves. And then how am I going to, see I haven't tacked down the edges on either side um, of any of these pieces because I wasn't sure what I wanted and I feel like I want these scallops to show. Am I going to, you know, do something with the fabric here so that it cuts off? Am I going to tack the fabric down and then cut it to be the scallop shape? These things remain unclear to me, but something will happen. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna continue on with my uh, split stitch here. Um, and maybe I'm gonna talk about the dark moon a little in my personal spiritual tradition. Um, you know, so astronomically, the, the dark moon is the time when the position of the earth and the moon and the sun and everything means that no light is falling on the moon. The moon does not give off its own light, right? It uh, reflects the light of the sun. Um, and in my tradition, the moon, well, hopefully you can see, I'm not uh, well practiced about stitching on screen. Um, so I'm just doing a split stitch and I do have a little line up here I'm trying to follow. So the split stitch is just um, coming up through the stitch you just made. Right, and then it creates that kind of a lovely pattern. So the dark moon is, is astronomically speaking, it's the time when the sun is, everything's in position so that the sun is not reflecting on the moon and you can't see it in the sky. Uh, you know, some, sometimes um, if, if you, depending on where you live, um, you might be able to see sort of the very vague outline of it in the sky, but pretty much you can't see it. Um, 
And the full moon, obviously, is when uh, the, moon, the sun is reflecting fully on the moon and you can see the full, you can see the whole circle of the moon. Um, now, as in every spiritual and religious tradition, there are um, th things of meaning, right? <laughs> so for Christians, the cross has layers and layers of meaning um, around um, sacrifice and death and rebirth um, and suffering and yeah, all, all of those all of those meanings come out of that form of the cross. And um, the same in, in paganism. <clears throat> um, but mostly those meanings happen through the natural world. Um, you might call them metaphors. Um, I mean, metaphors is a good word. <laughs> uh, of things that are actually happening that take on increased or added meaning for a practitioner. So in, um, since most, most, not all, most pagan traditions are um, earth honoring and nature inspired, we look to nature for our meaning and metaphor, metaphor and meaning. So the moon, so the full moon, as you might guess just by looking at it, um, is really about uh, you know, full potency, full power, standing in your full power, um, manifesting things into the world, um, like peace or your hopes and dreams, or, uh, you know, for some people like a job <laughs> or some money, um, whatever it is you are focusing on your manifestation energy on. Um, and so, uh, one, one particular tradition in, um, under the pagan umbrella is witchcraft. That's one tradition. And so if you're a witch, you might do your workings under a full moon if you're really trying to manifest something um, and make something come into being. Um, whereas the, uh, the dark moon um, is, as you might guess, a, a very different energy. It is um, the moon under which you might do some deep reflection on um, how things went the previous month or where things might be, where you want things to go um, in the following month. I don't think I'm doing a very good job of getting this on camera. Um, it's a time for reflecting. It's a time for maybe wrestling with a particular shadow element in yourself that you want to... Um, shift and uh, release a particular sorrow or grief maybe that you want to shift or release. Um, you know, it's, a, it's just a very different energy. You know, what am I doing? Pay attention, Tracy. I'm talking too much. Um, so that's more what the dark moon is about, is about this, this much more sort of interior energy. It's more of a reflection energy than a doing energy. Um, it might be, the, or, or if you're doing something, it might be the doing might be releasing something. Um, releasing, uh, trying to maybe release some bad, or not bad, but just some habit patterns or some thought patterns that just don't serve you anymore. Um, so, so the doing energy is quite different. Uh, so anyway, that's what the dark moon is about. And um, as I'm creating this dark moon, it was just the dark moon a um, couple days ago. Um, and so there's just that energy. And also it's a little bit of a, you know, just the way Advent for Christians is, is a kind of an energy of waiting, of waiting with patience for, in, in the case of Christians, for the birth of Christ. Um, there is something about the energy between the dark moon um, and the new moon because it might be a day or two before. So the new moon is the f is when you see that very first tiny sliver of light on the moon, um, and and the metaphors and energies around the new moon are are about, as you might guess, new beginnings, um, uh, 
stepping into a new attitude about something or uh, starting a new project or something along those lines or just you know as humans <laughs> we just constantly need the option to be reborn we constantly need the option of putting down something that just isn't working for us about ourselves and stepping into a new way of being. We need second chances and third chances and 67th chances. And um, so the new moon is about that hope of like, all right, you know what? I totally effed this up and I can start again. I can bring some new energy. So the time between the dark moon and the new moon, it has that same waiting energy that, that Advent has for Christians. Um, what new is coming my way? All right, so thank you for joining me. Um, and I hope that uh, you are having a great day, that if you need a new beginning, you can see today as a new beginning, and that you're having fun stitching. Bye-bye.